This video report aims to reveal how former 343 Industries leadership failed the Halo Infinite campaign development team by making abysmal and head-scratching decisions that severely hurt the campaign's development. Also, the information I'm about to share is from one of my sources who is a former Halo Infinite developer and a very legitimate source for campaign information. Now, without further ado, it's time to reveal the truth. When Halo Infinite development began, former 343 leadership placed the campaign team in a bubble that was cut off from studio collaboration. In other words, they were forced to develop an ambitious open-world Halo game without proper support. I asked my source why the campaign team was placed in a bubble, and they said, I have no idea. I think executives have this theory that you can solve anything by throwing more bodies at a problem, and that just doesn't work. Game design thrives on collaboration and innovation, and when you just shove people in a box, no matter how many people, you aren't going to get good progress. The campaign team was doomed from the start because of no collaboration, and their leaders would not even explain the reasoning for their damaging decisions. To make things worse, the campaign did not receive any external testing. The campaign team was pissed off because previous Halo campaigns were run through extensive focus testing by customers who answered surveys and stuff from Xbox. My source said, I think Joseph Staden ran some external feedback sessions at the end when he joined, but the game was 90% done at that point and there was not much time to respond to anything. I asked my source why the campaign did not receive external testing, and once again, they said, I have no idea. The campaign did receive some internal testing through what was called Days of Play, where the whole studio would play the campaign in its current state. This was helpful with the campaign since it did not receive any focus testing. However, Leadership decided to completely cut internal testing, which cut off all feedback loops for the campaign team, and they cut a lot of other meetings and reviews for the campaign. My source is not exactly sure why Days of Plays were cancelled, but they assume leadership did not think internal testing was necessary anymore, especially since leadership did not participate. What I'm saying is, leadership did not even test the campaign themselves during the days that were meant for internal testing. They also think the only time leadership asked for studio-wide feedback on the campaign after Days of Play was cancelled was months before the game shipped and there was nothing anybody could do with that feedback in such a small amount of time. Now here's the final and most interesting part of this story. The campaign team was drained and stressed from trying to develop Infinite's campaign in a bubble without collaboration and proper support. So to give them a break and to lift their spirits, 343 Industries started week-long hackathons where they would make playable Halo game prototypes. Some really cool stuff came from hackathons, such as the broadsword space game called Starfighter, which was revealed in 2022 when a former developer tweeted about concept art for the project. But hackathons were just meant for internal morale building and testing 343 Industries tools in new ways, and not for creating a real game. As my source says, some studios have had luck with turning hackathon prototypes into real games. Unfortunately, this was not the case for 343 Industries, as leadership only allowed the campaign team to conduct two hackathons before they shut them down and threw away the prototypes that were created because they did not help with the bottom line of developing Infinite's campaign. Not only were some awesome Halo prototypes trashed, but shutting down hackathons created the opposite effect that leadership wanted. My source said, I don't think management understood the effect it had to stretch your creative legs on something Halo adjacent. Shutting hackathons and other things down had the opposite effect they wanted. People were drained. The focus was never off infinite, we just needed a small break. After only two weeks of morale building, 
leadership suddenly snatched away hackathons and the prototypes threw the campaign team back into development hell and destroyed morale. So, that concludes all the new information I can share at this time. My source is not able to talk about everything due to legal reasons, but the information they shared reveals why a lot of content was cut from the campaign and how former 343 Industries leadership failed the campaign team. And I'm very thankful my source took the time to share this information with me so Halo fans can learn the truth and I can speak for developers who are trapped behind non-disclosure agreements. If you want to learn about the type of content that was cut from the campaign as a result of this poor leadership, click the link to my previous video in the description of this video. Lastly, let me know what you think about this new information, and thank you very much for watching. Alright guys, peace.